Okay, guys. Uh, now let me discuss about the relative stick dynamics. So far, we have been concerned with the kinematics. That is what we can say about the motion of particle without considering of its cause. It means that exactly if the particle is motion, what is the force behind it to make it in a motion? So what we need to look at the laws that determine the motion that is the relativistic form of Newtonian law of laws of motion. Firstly, the first law is accepted in the same form as we have presented. However, two arguments can be presented with indicate which indicate that the Newton's second law may need revision. Once argument Argument only suggests that something may be wrong, while the second is of much more fundamental nature. Firstly, according to Newton's second law, if we apply a constant force, constant force to an object, it will accelerate without bound, that is up to and the beyond the speed of light. Unfortunately, if you are going to accept this validity of Lorentz transformation, then the we find that the factor gamma becomes imaginary. Thus, the real position and the time transform into imaginary quantities in a frame of reference of an object moving faster than the speed of light. And this suggests that a problem exists though it does not turn out to be possible to build up a mathematical theory of a particle moving at speeds greater than to c. The second difficulty with Newton's law arises from a result derived from second and the third law that in an isolated system, the total momentum of all the particles involves its constant. However, momentum is defined for a particle moving with a velocity u having mass is represented by p is equal to m of u. The equation then is whether or not this law of conservative of momentum satisfies Einstein's first postulate that is with momentum defined in this way is momentum conserved in all inertial frame of reference that is the question mark. To clear it let me decide let us take an example of the collision of the two bodies. So before the collision, this particle M1 and M2 are moving with a velocity of U1 and U2 towards each other. After the collision, for example, M1 and M2 masses are moving with a velocity U1 prime and U2 prime. To investigate whether or not we always find that this M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M2 U2. M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 U1 bar plus M2 U2 bar in every inertial frame of reference. Let us recall that the relative stick, the velocities must be transformed according to the relative stick laws given in equation number 6. Equation number 6, if however a we retain the Newtonian principle that the mass of a particle is independent of the frame of the reference in which it is measured we find equation number we find equation number 14 does not hold true in all frame of references one look at the complex form of the velocity transform transformation formula would suggest this conclusion because what we are considering that if mass is independent of the frame of the reference then if we apply this velocity transformation what it suggests that our momentum conservation represented with the help of equation number 14 must be satisfied. Thus the Newtonian definition of momentum and the Newtonian law of conservation of momentum are inconsistent with the Lorentz transformation because once we are applying the Lorentz transformation we have a complex formulation of velocity transformation. Even though at a very low speed, these Newtonian particles are known yield result in an agreement with agreement with obser uh, observation to an exceedingly high degree of accuracy. So, what we need to look at 
whether this concept of the momentum entirely different in a relativistic theory. So we need a reasonable approach to generalize the concept of Newtonian concept of momentum in which the law of conservation of momentum is obeyed in all frame of the references. We do not know so far whether such generalization even exists. Any proposal that we make can only be justified in the long run by the success or otherwise the, the generalization is in describing what is observed experimentally. So now let us discuss about the relativistic moment. So any relativistic generalization of Newtonian momentum must satisfy two criteria. Number one, relativistic momentum must be conserved in all frame of reference. Number two, relativistic momentum must reduce to Newtonian momentum at a very low speed. The first criteria must be satisfied in order to satisfy Einstein's first postulate while the second criteria must be satisfied as it is known the Newton's law we correct at sufficiently low speed. So we will be proposing, we will be formulating, we are generalizing this concept of Newtonian momentum which is applicable for the, which is satisfying the Einstein first postulate and for a limiting case if this velocity is very very less in that case that law has to reduce in the simple Newton's second law. By number of by number of arguments the strongest of which being based on arguments concerning that the symmetry property of space and time the definition for the relativistic momentum of a particle moving with a velocity u as measured respect to a frame of references S that satisfy this criteria can be shown to take the form. So what we are generalizing, we are utilizing the symmetry properties of space and time and we are formulating a momentum in such a fashion that it would generalize for the which follows the Einstein's first postulate as well as once the velocity is very less this is providing the Newton, Newton's concept of momentum. So, we will be representing this momentum, this P is equal to m naught u divided by 1 minus u square divided by c square, where m naught is the rest mass of a particle, that is the mass of the particle when at rest and which can be identified with the Newton, Newtonian mass of a particle. With this form, the relativistic momentum Einstein then postulated that for a system of particles. The total momentum of a system of a particles is always conserved in all frame of reference, whether or not the total number of particles involved is constant. So here the, he, the Einstein postulated that if in all the momentum of the system of the particle always conserved in all frame of reference whether or not total number of particles involved is constant. It means that what the statement says that the laws of conservation of relativistic momentum generalized to apply to a situation in which particle can stick, suppose two particles are stick together and making a one or one particle breaks up in a two particle. So this process is called the creation and annihilation. Is only a postulate whose corrections must be tested by experimentally. However, however, it turns out that the postulate above with relativistic momentum defined as in equation number 15 is implied confirmed experimentally. As if you remember that we have discussed that the creation and annihilation of the, the existence of the positron after the Dirac. In quantum mechanics, we have discussed that in 1932, it was defined that the creation of the particle, that the existence of the antiparticle. So from there, you can understand that from the photon, one electron and a positron are created. It means that the, these both the frames, if the photon is, suppose the photon is at rest, for example, or even that the photon is moving in a certain frame of reference, and it is, it is interacting with certain potential and it is creating the two particles, the electron and the positron, and these two particles are considered in the second different frame of the reference. Then, the after the creation, before the creation, this momentum has to be conserved. 
So, and certainly the equation number 15, the equation number 15 for a limiting case, if u is very, very less than, then in that case the denominator can be reduced to 1. Then we can say that the equations, equation 15 will be reducing to the equation number 16 where this u is very less than to the c, which is just a Newtonian form of the momentum, as it should be. Now the second postulate, it is satisfying that. So, it was the ones that a particle to right to relativistic momentum equation 15 in the form P is equal to M of U, where M is equal to, now we are defining that M is equal to M0 divided by M1 minus U square divided by C square, which leads us to idea that the mass of a body increases with its velocity. However, while a Convenient interpretation in certain instances, it is not a recommended way to, of thinking in general since the velocity dependence of the mass. Defined in this way does not always behave might be expected. It is better to consider what we are considering now, this M0 as being an intrinsic property of a particle in the same way as its charge would be and that is the momentum that is increased by virtue of a factor in the denominator of equation number 15. So what we are calling rather, rather to saying that this m rest mass is increasing with respect to its velocity, rather what we are saying that by virtue of the factor that is denominator 1 on root 1 minus v square upon c, u square upon c square, that with this factor the momentum is changing. So once we have defined the relativistic momentum, so relativistic version of the momentum, we can now proceed towards the setting up a relativistic idea of force, work and energy. Then with the help of this relativistic momentum, in the next video I will be discussing about the relativistic total energy of the system of a particle or the system.